and uh, By the way, about iterative filtering algorithm, actually I showed a simplified version. I uh, will send you uh, uh, the file. Can you bounce me an email and I send you the file with the complete algorithm? Okay, so remember last time we said what um, a primal and dual uh, problems are. Uh, let me just to remind you, we had the following uh, problem, uh, so objective. Yeah, that's a strange power. Um, objective is uh, to uh, maximize uh, three x1 plus uh, x2 uh, plus 2x3 uh, subject to um, x1 plus x2 plus 3x3 Was this the problem that we looked at last time? Uh, I don't know, I'm not sure how to just show it. x1 plus x2 plus 3, yep, there it is. Okay, so uh, last. Uh, 3x2 um, no, 3x3 uh, is less than or equal than 30 and then 2x1 plus 2x2 plus 5x3 want, uh, we want it less than 24 and then finally 4x1 uh, plus x2 plus 2x3. Uh, we want this to be smaller or equal than 36, right? And uh, so how did we approach this problem? We said, uh, okay, let us multiply the first equation by uh, y1, so we multiply this by y1, this by y2, and this by y3. Uh, I should actually put this, uh, so we want to, it looks like division, so let me, so multiply this, ah, this looks like x, so let me just do that, right? And then we get, uh, uh, um, x1 that multiplies, uh, we will have y1 plus 2y2 uh, plus 4y3, right? Uh, and then we have, if we sum up these equations, then we have uh, uh, x2 that multiplies y1 plus 2y2 uh, plus y3 and finally plus x3 uh, which multiplies uh, uh, 3y1 plus uh, 5y2 plus uh, 2y3 right and this will be smaller or equal than 30 y1 plus uh, 24 y2 plus uh, 36 uh, y3, right? And now our goal is to choose, so now 
uh, look for y1, y2, y3 such that uh, this guy, y1 plus 2y2 plus 4y3 is, uh, uh, is, uh, is uh, bigger or equal uh, than 3, right? So we want this bit here to be to majorize so we want this here to be larger than 3 right uh, so we will have uh, the second factor y1 plus 2y2 plus y3 we want it bigger or equal than 1 and finally uh, we want 3y1 uh, plus 5y2 uh, plus 2y3 we want it bigger or equal than 2 right uh, right why do we want that uh, so why uh, because we want the following that uh, 3x1 the objective right which is 3x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 right which is the objective Oh gosh, this will be almost invisible. Um, I don't know why they buy this kind of markers for this purpose. Oh. Uh, so we want this to be uh, smaller or equal than um, x1 times y1 plus 2y2 plus 4y3 uh, plus x2 times uh, um, what is the uh, y1 plus 2y2 plus y3 plus x3 uh, times 3y1 plus 5y2 plus 2y3 right and we know that this is smaller or equal than 30 y1 plus uh, 24 y2 plus 36 y3 right we, we want to have this majorized by this um, uh, now, uh, uh, now choose uh, y1, y2, y3 uh, to also uh, minimize the value of the bound. We want this to be as tight as possible. To minimize 30y1 plus 2y2 plus 36y3, right? Because we want to see, <coughs> we want to put an upper bound on our objective, right? By choosing cleverly y's so that this is as small as possible, but in order for this inequality to hold these constraints have to be satisfied and so maximizing this subject to this constraint is called the dual program of the original uh, program namely it's called program i don't know for what reason when it's actually just a, a constraint optimization 
uh, problem. So maximizing the first objective uh, is reduced to minimizing the second objective. And just like in the business with mean cut uh, max flow, uh, max of this will be precisely equal to mean of this. Um, and in fact, uh, one can see uh, uh, this is what uh, <coughs> such uh, algorithms such as interior points try to kind of <coughs> reduce this gap uh, as much as possible. <coughs> okay, so now it's easy to see that if I write this in matrix form, Right, so if I call A, if I introduce A to be the following matrix, 1, 1, 3, 2, 2, 5, and uh, 4, 1, uh, 3, right, then we can write this in a compact form, and I introduce a vector, say, let's call it uh, uh, C, which is uh, uh, 3, uh, 1, uh, 2, uh, then the problem can be now written as uh, uh, maximize the dot product, so it will be uh, C transposed times X if we write uh, well, I wrote it as a, uh, let's uh, say, because factors should be actually a column, so, so this is C transpose. Times x, subject, ah, and uh, sorry, I forgot, let me put uh, another vector, uh, let's call it b, which is uh, uh, 30, uh, 24, so B transpose will be 30, 24, and uh, 36. Then subject to uh, linear inequalities, right? Uh, A times X is smaller or equal than B where this inequality is just a partial ordering. We say that one vector is smaller or equal than another vector just in case every coordinate on the left-hand side is smaller or equal than every coordinate on the right-hand side. Uh, so now it's easy to see what the dual looks like. Let me do it here. Uh, what does the dual look like? Now the vector, <coughs> let's call it, um, uh, let's call the vector uh, C star, uh, looks as follows. Uh, the vector uh, C star, uh, so I call C the objective, is uh, uh, 30y1, so it's 30, uh, 2 and 36, right? Because this is, uh, these are the coefficients of the objective, right? Uh, and then uh, let's see what matrix uh, A star is looks like. Uh, well, matrix uh, A star looks as follows. 1, 2, 4. Oops, uh, 20, did they mess it up here? 24, 24, 24. Two. Two. where is, oh, 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 24, why, thank you. Uh, and and six star, uh, six star. Sorry? Six star, 30, 24, 36. Oh, I, I haven't woken up yet, let's see. So the objective, ah, uh, here as well, thank you. Okay, so it's one, two, four, one, uh, Two, one, and uh, three, 
uh, five, two, and finally vector B, uh, trans B star, and then transpose is equal to the bounds, which is uh, three, one, two. Okay, so let us now see. How is this matrix A star related to the matrix A? It's just a transpose. It's just a transpose, exactly. So this is just A transpose. Now, what is B star transpose? How is it related to which object here? It's just the the C vector, exactly, um, just the vector of the objective. So this is just a, a C vector and uh, 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 finally, let's see, so this is B. And what is C star transposed? Well, let's see, C star, what is, this is the vector of the objective. It is just uh, 30, uh, 24, 36. And what is this vector? B. That's just B transpose. So the way to get the dual problem is actually remarkably simple. Rather than going through these calculations, simply C and B swap the roles, right? B star is C transpose, and C star transpose is B transpose. So B and C simply swap the uh, roles, so the coefficients of the objective become the coefficients, become the bounds uh, of the dual and vice versa. And the uh, matrix of linear inequality, uh, inequality is just the transpose. Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, this only reduces uh, um, <coughs> one linear programming problem to another linear programming problem. But it turns out that the, uh, uh, some of the methods for solving linear problems actually operate in parallel on both and know when to stop when <coughs> the difference between the value of this objective and uh, that objective becomes very small, right? When they are all essentially equal. And that's just like in max flow mean cut, right? Maximizing uh, the flow was reduced to minimizing a cut, and we will see that this is not just analogy. This actually, max flow indeed can be reduced verbatim to a mean, to a linear, to a linear programming. Uh, uh, problem. <coughs> okay, so how does, uh, the, how do we actually solve, uh, uh, what does the, the most uh, kind of, um, shall we say, famous problem, the simplex, uh, the method for solving, how does it work? <coughs> it's actually very intuitive what it does, and interestingly enough, in practice, it performs uh, remarkably well, uh, even though theoretically it could run in exponential time. So, uh, but remarkably in practice, never it ne simply never happens. Uh, it's kind of a bit of a mystery. So this means that for most of kind of that the measure of cases that uh, um, that make it misbehave is very small in, uh, compared to the universe uh, um, of all uh, uh, problems, right? So that's very fortunate. Uh, so this is the idea. 
So let's start uh, uh, with the value of our objective again. So it is 3x1 plus x2 plus 2x3, right? This is the objective. And uh, inequalities are x1 plus x2 plus 3x3 less than equal than 30 and 2x1 plus 2x2 plus 5x3 less than 24 and finally 4x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 is smaller or equal than 36. Okay, plus, sorry I forgot, in the standard form you always have uh, these conditions. I hope I won't forget to tell you how you can eliminate uh, these non-negativity conditions. Okay, so what do we do? If we introduce new variables that are called slack variables because they measure how much leeway, how much space you have between this value and the bound 30, right? So let us introduce uh, x3, x4, and x5 that will also be non-negative. And see, we simply said... Uh, this will be an experience. Yeah, yeah, so it's x4, uh, x5, x6. Uh, so we simply said uh, x6 is equal to 30 minus x1 plus x2 plus uh, 3x3, then uh, oops, this is x4. Now x5 will be 36 minus, now 24, minus uh, 2x1 plus 2x2 plus 5x3 and finally x6 is equal to uh, 36 minus 4x1 plus x2 uh, plus 2x3. Okay, and now we proceed kind of in a uh, very natural way because uh, all the bounds uh, are positive in this case. In general case it actually takes a bit of work to find starting point. Uh, so we will iteratively look, we will try to increase this little by little. right? In this particular case uh, because all of these guys are positive, uh, there is a trivial solution for these inequalities. Can you tell me which point, uh, which values for x1, x2, and x3 definitely make all these three inequalities true? Zero. Zeros, right? So we will start with, uh, so let's call this x and then zero approximation and uh, uh, it will be equal to uh, zero uh, uh, zero ah. so x1 is zero x2 is zero x3 is uh, zero well then can you tell me what is x4 or x5 and x6. So what, what is the value of x4? It's 30, right? Of uh, x5 is 24 and of x6 is 36. Right? That's the zero approximation. Now we simply look for a variable in the objective that has positive coefficient. If all the coefficients are negative, what is then the maximal 
uh, value of this objective, say if it was minus 3, minus x2, minus 2x3, and you had uh, these conditions, uh, what would be the max value of this if all the values were negative? Uh, zero, because uh, x is a positive, right? So we can assume that at least one of these is positive. Uh, so let's take x1, and we do what you would do naturally. You simply ask yourself, how much can I push x1 without violating my constraints? From the first equation, uh, x1 has to be smaller or equal to what value? 30. 30. From this inequality, x1 has to be smaller or equal than what? 12. 12. And from here, uh, x1 is smaller or equal than 9. 9. Now, because all the constraints have to be satisfied, the conclusion is that x1 has to be smaller or equal than 9. Right? And so we act greedily and we set x1 equal to 9. Right? So uh, now we get a new approximation that looks like this. x1 is 9. x2 remains 0. x3 remains 0. x4 becomes how much is x4 now? With this evaluation, what is x4? 21. 21. Uh, what is x5? 6. x5 is uh, 6. And finally, x6 is 0. zero. Right? What is the value of the objective? Uh, let's call this z. Uh, right? So z0 here was 0. Now we improve this first iteration. The value of the objective is uh, uh, 9 times 3, 27. And the rest is 0. So we improved the the estimate from 0 to 27, right? Now the point is this. The idea is very simple. You can't push x1 any further. So x1 is now kind of useless. Well, let's turn x1 into a slack <coughs> variable and introduce uh, a new variable into Onto, the, onto this side. So what do we do? Uh, we know that uh, this is precisely equal to 36. So since uh, uh, 4x1 plus x2 plus, uh, oh, here it is. Uh, so uh, plus uh, 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 x2 plus 2x3 is equal to 36, we can get that x1 is equal, if I divide by 4, I will get 9 minus 1 quarter x2 uh, minus uh, plus two. Uh, let's see. Am I messing up? X. Yeah. Uh, minus one half x three, right? And what I can do now, I can eliminate. So I can now take this, and I can eliminate x1, both from the objective and from the constraints. So uh, now we will replace uh, 
uh, this from x1 we will replace it here and we will replace here so let's see what we get now notice uh, this equation is equivalent to that equation it's just different <coughs> what's on the left and what's on the right so we never change in equalities we are always the same we are just trying to see how to evaluate the variables not violating these equalities so that this is maximal now what happens if i replace in the objective my new objective uh, let's call this uh, z will be again equal to uh, actually why did I choose change the color let me go back to blue it's a little bit more visible Jesus this is a permanent permanent marker oh my <laughs> I think I made the someone's life really miserable uh, I have to, to okay uh, so Z oh my uh, gosh they even hmm. okay so uh, let us see if I replace I'll have three times this which is three times nine is uh, 27 uh, minus three quarters of x2, right? Uh, minus three halves of x3, right? Plus x2 plus 2x3. And what is this when we a little bit clean it up? That's 27 minus. Uh, let's see, uh, three quarters, one quarter x2, uh, no, uh, plus one quarter x2, uh, let me make sure I didn't mess it up, yep, one quarter x2, uh, plus then I have one half x3, right? Uh, and plus, what did I mess up here? This is, oh, this is wrong. Uh, this from, I'm uh, sorry about that. Uh, I was an autopilot. Uh, so, oh gosh, okay. So, uh, from this equation, I guess it's, uh, I'm just missing uh, the, the x6. I have, okay, let's do it step by step. I have um, uh, x since uh, uh, x6 is equal to 36 minus 4x1 minus x2 minus 2x3, I get x1 is equal to uh, let's see, uh, what do I get? Um, okay, let's do it one by one step so that we don't. I get 4x1 is equal 36 minus x2 minus 2x3 minus x6. Dividing by 4, I get x1 is equal 9 minus 1 quarter um, x2 minus one half x3 and minus one quarter x6. So if I substitute this into the equation, let's see what do I get. Uh, I get uh, 27 uh, minus three quarters uh, x2 minus uh, uh, three halves uh, x3 minus uh, three quarters x6 and then uh, plus x2 
plus x3, and this will give me uh, 27, uh, and then I have plus one quarter x2, uh, and then I have, uh, and uh, here is two, so two minus three halves is one half plus one half x3, and then uh, um, what do I have next? Uh, minus three quarters, uh, yeah, minus three quarters x6. Uh, and I believe I didn't mess it up. Uh, let's see, 27 plus 1 quarter x2 plus 1 half minus 3 quarter x6, right? So this is my new objective. But it is equal to all the objective, right? So even the objective doesn't change. Why is it equal? Well, I simply, because the equations remain true, right? We keep these equations and we just solve, move around the variables. Uh, then the value of this, even though it's only expressed in different variables, uh, it's expressed in different variables, but for as long as these equalities are satisfied, uh, the same objective in a different shape. Now you also eliminate from the um, from the uh, you eliminate x1 from the right hand side of the uh, equations. So what do you have? You have let's see we have x Four is equal to uh, thirty minus, and then we have x one, and we know what x one is. It is nine minus one quarter x two minus one half x three uh, minus one quarter x6, right? That's all just our x1. And then we have uh, uh, plus x2 plus